These are back doors, aren't they? Program devices. How do they work? The code is hidden in tumblers. One position opens a lock, and another position opens one of these doors. As Ralph Ellis explains, the first degree tracing board is a representation of Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple being modeled after Giza, this is also a representation of the Giza Plateau. The three pillars being the three greater pyramids of Giza, and the two cubes being the plugs or the doors of the pyramid, and I would further speculate a symbol of the double square of the King's Chamber floor plan. Inside every Masonic Lodge you are likely to find the two pillars of Solomon's Temple and the five-pointed or blazing star. It seems highly unlikely to my mind that it is a mere coincidence that these are the same elements we see at play in the 9-11 event. My current belief system views what happened on that day as a mega ritual. When the symbolic pillars came down on 9-11, the holiest of holies was revealed. Isis was unveiled. If we think of the towers as the pillars of Hercules, then what was revealed was the new Atlantis. We find another related and valid symbol system in the Kabbalah. Here the World Trade Center represents the left and the right pillar, the middle pillar being formed by the space in between, and representing, amongst other things, cosmic illumination or higher consciousness. The middle pillar can also be viewed as World Trade Center 7. We then have all three of the pillars on the first degree tracing board, representing Solomon's Temple and in its turn, the three major pyramids of Giza, evoked during the 9-11 mega ritual. Which brings us to my current preferred metaphor for higher consciousness, the Stargate. This corporate sculpture which used to stand in between the Twin Towers is called the Spherical Caryatid. It was made by artist Fritz Kunig and was nicknamed the Sphere. Let's have a quick look at Earth's consensus library entry about this piece and see what we can learn. We see that Kunig made this thing in Bavaria, the same place where the Illuminati was founded. The most interesting fact about the placement of the Sphere at the World Trade Center Plaza has to be that architect and designer of the World Trade Center, Minoru Yamasaki, intended the plaza itself to be a representation of the Grand Mosque of Mecca, the sphere in particular taking the place of the Kaaba.
should also bear in mind in this regard that the Great Pyramid has the ratio of pi encoded mathematically in its design. The Benben, the obelisk, the pyramid, the circle and the sphere are thus all intimately connected. Ralph Ellis further speculates in Eden in Egypt that the processional rituals of the Muslims during the Hajj are directly descended from the rituals involving the circling of the Great Pyramid of Giza. This is why I believe the sphere was set to rotate every 24 hours at the World Trade Center Plaza. It was mimicking the processional rituals at the Kaaba and at the Great Pyramid of Giza. religion of the mystery schools, they believe that man was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust and vindictive God, and that man was not told by this unjust and vindictive God that he could have the same power, and man was set free from the bonds of ignorance by Lucifer to his agent Satan, and many believe that the two are the same. That's okay, because maybe they are. And that through the gift of intellect, man himself will become God. When the Titanic left, it was declared the unsinkable ship. If you do that, Allah will sink it, just to spite it. You can't do that! When they made the Challenger. Now you know Challenger mean in Arabic Mutahaddi. It's a very bad word. Who are they challenging? They're sending it off into space. Who are you challenging? Challenging who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well look what happened. He'll just blow you up. That's what Allah will do to me, just blow you up. And then they say, Oh, it's a, a tragedy. The seventh grade teacher riding on raw technology. They put a seventh grade teacher into raw technology, thinking that they're qadirin alayha. Hatta wanaahluha anhum qadirun alayha. They thought the people they'll they'll become so deluded. Allah says in Surah Yunus, they will become so deluded that they think they're all powerful over the earth. Right? So they take up on the challenger. Allah, they, you want to call it challenger? We'll see how long the challenge lasts. So as we start to look into the numerology, what we're looking at is a tree of life. And this is something that the magicians use in what I believe to be a map of the uh, extra dimension. So as you're looking into this map, there are ten spots on it, and they are called the Sephiroth. And within these Sephiroths, you have your trinity at the top. So this is, this is the all, the one, looking at itself and creating a reflection. You go up from the bottom up to the top, you have ten points, ten being God. Ten being the hermaphroditic symbol, one and zero. So as you come up to ten, that is their god. That is ten. That is the hermaphrodite. But if you stop at nine and you skip to eleven, skipping god, then you are a Luciferian. Because uh. eleven is the number of the magician. It's the one step above. Once you have accomplished the tree of life, you are now the magician. You are one above ten. But they're doing it by skipping god. That's the symbolism of nine, eleven. <laughs> 